The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want Sam percent off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. Attention, Sarkarians. Embark on a cosmic journey at www.andrewvanzart.com. Saving by clicking on our affiliate tab. Discounts await. Your click not only unlocks deals, but supports the beats and discussions of these stellar radio stations. Atlantic Jetway Radio. Join the Sith and let the unlimited power of the discounts await you in the shopping. And for you musicians to get a discount on DistroKid, www.andrewvanzart.com, your portal to savings. May the discounts be with you. The information on this podcast is my opinion and some internet research. Galaxy's most popular movie is Great Family Entertainment. Huh? Aren't we listening to Galactic Tower Radio? Uh, wh- wh- what is this whistling? I. Huh? I'm confused. Hosted by Andrew Van's Art. Now you're listening to the power. Thank you. Now we can start listening to the show. I was so confused. May the force be with you. Alrighty, hello, 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 and welcome to Galactic Radio. I am Andrew Van Zark, and this is your safe space to discuss Star Wars, music, and other geeky topics, and also Star Trek. So let's get ourselves flowing and running here for a second. And uh, let's talk a little bit about The Acolyte. We're going to discuss episode four of The Acolyte. Hope you're all having a great time and that you're all enjoying your night as much as possible. But before we get started, I wanted to mention something. You know, the High Republic. It is said to be 500 BBY to 100 BBY. You know, the Jedi Order and the Republic experienced a golden age of progress. The Jedi began to turn their attention outwards under the leadership of the high consul and masters like Yoda. This period of relative peace permits the Jedi to explore farther into the remote frontier in a quest to forge a deeper connection to the Force and the galaxy. Republic Chancellor uh, Qui-Gon Jarlak and Orlan Molo expand the Republic further into the frontiers, paving the way for visionary Chancellor Lena Sol uh, more than a century later to embark on her great works to inspire galactic unity. Yet Republic growth brings it into conflict, be it with the path of the open hand or a century of a half later with the Merciless Nihil Raiders and the Carnivus Dranger. Master of Arcris leads the Jedi in their quest to restore peace, but the Eye of Nihil, Marchion Ro, aims to bring down the entire order. And that being said, you know, everything that's happening on the Acolyte and every little small detail does not break canon whatsoever. So if you think that, uh, just because Kiramundi came to be on the Acolyte, on the fourth episode, on the fourth installment of the Acolyte, that sure begs the question, are you really into the lore of Star Wars? Do you really know the exact thing? It, it was only declared on EU that Kiramundi uh, had a specific age to be told in the lore. But in actual canon, it's never been officially uh, stabled what age is Kid Adamundi. And just you thinking that Kinarimundi appearing on episode 4 of The Acolyte really brings it down and takes it really to the ground then and killed Star Wars, then you are just a little bit bonkers. A little bit bonkers, in my opinion. Um, that That's just the, the way I'm seeing it, the way I, I like to ex, uh, expose it at this point in time, you know? Because honestly, I don't even know what to think at this point in time. With all this, you know. But, you know, sometimes people like, for example, Star Wars Theory, they like to throw shit out. They like to make things more toxic than what they actually are, you know. 
And he clearly said at some point, I'm not watching anything Disney Star Wars. I'm going to continue with the expand the universe, whatever they expand on the expand the universe, and then continue talking through that side. Yet he kill, he still continues to enjoy some Star Wars from Disney and complains more than anything, you know. But anyways, let's let's get ourselves running here with some more music before we actually dive into the Acolyte. And we're going to listen to a little bit of, you know, soundscapes here and there uh, and get ourselves flowing on that matter. So hope you're having a great time. Hope you're all enjoying yourself and uh, that you get yourself running as good as possible. And we're going to listen to Veil, The Quiet Path. Let's get it. Alrighty, alrighty. We're back from that uh, music break. Um, that was a great song. I hope you're all relaxed now and ready to dive into the breakdown of episode four of the Acolyte. So we're gonna use a little bit of what the Volk uh, wrote on Volk.com. Uh, this was written by Adrian. We're gonna use that as a backup to uh, understand a little bit more. Uh, maybe get some details that I might have sl- might have slipped in my mind. But there's a lot of things that are gonna encompass here like my disclaimer says some of my stuff is my thoughts and some of it it's internet information so let's read and as i read the article we're gonna get ourselves you know entwined and discussing it and giving my commentary along the way so day is the fourth episode of the acolyte the mysterious star figure finally appears before the jedi right after uh committing a heinous crime you know just for the uh uh a quick uh, announcement here and disclaimer. This article has a major spoiler, so if you haven't seen the episode, might as well pause my radio show if you're listening recorded and watch the episode and come back. So, let's do a small recap here of the story so far. So, after recovering Osha, Saul, and the other Jedi investigate another incident, but when they get there, the only thing they find is the body of Master Torben. After confirming that Osha is innocent. They try to capture May, but she ends up fleeing. Kimir meets with May and tells her that he knows where to find Kalnaka, the third Jedi on her list. A flashback shows that Osha and May lived with a coven of witches. The leader of these witches admits to the uh, to creating the twins with some unknown dark power before completing the ascension ceremony. The Jedi arrived at the scene 
and demanded to test the kids. Osha accepted that he wanted to leave with the Jedi and Mother Anisea. You know, respected her decision, but Maya did not. Fueled by jealousy and anger, Mai initiates a fire that ends up killing almost every witch. Master Saul watched Maya's fall to the abyss, but he was able to save Osha from the fall. It's not entirely clear who's this, per- who's this perspective, but there are many pieces missing in this puzzle. So right now we're going to have a detailed breakdown uh, of the premiere of the two episodes of The Acolyte. And make sure uh, you're not missing out on interesting hidden details and references, you know. So we've also got you covered with all the possible background knowledge you might want to obtain about the High Republic with a reading order guide uh, to get you started. And our prep guide for the Acolyte will give you all the details you need to learn before you start the show. If you want to get yourself into it on the show of the Acolyte, you can check those out on the bulk.com. And you'll have yourself prepping with the catalog of all the stuff of the High Republic and the Acolyte Prep Guide and all that stuff. So if you click those links on the Volk, you'll be glad to uh, have that and you're going to understand things a little better. So, serving the bureaucrats. Once again, we see how the Jedi Order is so intertwined with the politicians of the Republic. The decision to not tell the High Council about the events just because they would be forced to inform the Senate so is so stupid to me, you know, in a way, you know. So it's true that the Jedi must get involved in the world of politics. After all, they are funded by the Republic. However, it seems like the Jedi have forgotten that they serve the people of the Republic not the politicians sitting at a fancy office on Coruscant, which is a little bit out of, you know, the the way that things should do, you know. Because sometimes the high council on Coruscant tend to say and do things that just, just don't make sense, you know. So it would be dumb to say that uh, public opinion is irrelevant, but their priorities are not in the right order. There are ways to circumstances, uh, formalities, and protocols. Like when Obi-Wan asked Anakin to spy on Palpatine. It is so obnoxious when the Jedi Order acts like a government office that takes action only after receiving some written forms. You know, so the idea of a roguelike Jedi training Osha uh, sisters to kill Je- Jedi Master and s- succeeding so far uh, should reach the ears of the High Council as soon as it becomes a possibility. The Acolyte is doing a good job at showing how, since the High Republic era, the Jedi started to lose focus and slowly became more an instrument of the Senate rather than true keepers of the peace. Which I've always completely uh, had that question in my head. Like, aren't they supposed to keep the peace? Why are they doing this? Huh? They're not They're not following their traditions, you know? Their, their original oath. You know, so now they're paying the price after Torben's death and the lack of questions answered. I'm fully convinced that there are some things that we're not being told. Indara, Kelnaka, and Torben did something that haunted them to their last day, and I would love to know what that should be and what that is. Why would the three of them depart to distant worlds and hard reach locations? It's as if they wanted to leave everything behind, you know. Indara went to a small town in the middle of nowhere. Torbin took the uh, Baras uh, Vo and Klanaka pretty much himself from anyone. All of them continued to be Jedi, but they didn't want it to be uh, in contact with the Order or anyone close to it. The symbols that are all over Klanaka's place are the same markings that Mai and the other witches have in their bodies. Was he studying them, or perhaps there's another reason for it? It begs the question, you know. Sadly, it's impossible to tell with the current information from the moment he appeared on screen, you know. It looks like he was just living as a hermit, living a peaceful life in the middle of nowhere without anyone around. 
And if I had to guess, and hear me out, I'd say that Indara, Kalnaka, Torben, and Sol kill all the witches. Maybe not with their lightsabers, but by doing something that directly or indirectly eliminated all of them. This would explain the strange behavior of all three Jedi Masters and why Sol feels so responsible for Osha's well-being. I think that they did something indirectly, in my opinion, in my opinion, you know, just indirectly. So instead of being eaten alive by the guilt, he trained the little girl to become a Jedi in an attempt to compensate for his mistake and diminishing the guilt. It would also make perfect sense as to why Mai hates these particular Jedi so much and her determination to kill all four of them because she's going to do it no matter what it takes, no matter how much it, it has to uh, get people out of the way t- so she can destroy those four Jedis. You know, these are particular Jedis she's after. So this scenario is perfect for the mysterious dark figure. Weaponizing the hate and pain of someone to destroy your enemies? It doesn't get more Sith than that. For sure. You know, so... Before we get into more details of this, we're going to have our music break and let's listen to a little bit of Chant the Quiet Path. Now we're back from that music break. So, now, for some reason, we're playing dumb. Out of all the known characters, Kimir is by far the most enigmatic one. And he is always in the right place, you know? So, with the right tools and the proper knowledge, um, I would bet that he's just playing dumb and has Ultra's motives, you know? Risking so much... Just because he cares about me? I don't buy that for a second, you know. Uh Uh-uh. So, Kimir is constantly giving suggestions to Mai about how to complete her mission. Sometimes, he's subtle, others not so much. But it's clear that he's very invested in Mai's mission. But he distinguishes it as friendship. Or better said, disguise it. You know, he's disguising it as friendship. But who knows? There's there's theories out there that he might be the the main villain, the Sith, the Darth uh, Darth uh, Smiles, as some people are calling it on X, which I find that hilarious in my opinion. You know, Darth Smiles because he has like a big smile on the mask. It's like a really big smile. So yeah, but his master probably ordered him to follow and help May as much as possible. You know. Uh, Not only to ensure her success, but to test if she's worthy of becoming something more than a servant. You know, there's another possibility uh, that the explanation is less probable, but I'll discuss it in my next point here. So so let's get ourselves diving into this. So the face behind the mask, this is where we all want to be. You know, this is the important part, the, the place where everything needs to fall into place. I was wondering how long it would take for the masked figure to finally appear. The immediate question that everyone is asking is 
who is the person behind the mask? Come on. We, we, we need the information. We got to know. We got to know who's the man behind the mask. Let's get this. So, the most obvious guess would be Kamir. You know, and I mean obvious. As, a, as I mentioned before, he is always conveniently in the right place to help May. Not only that, but he was very close to Kalnaka before May betrayed him. Hmm. It, it brings a lot of questions to the table, you know. It's coincidental, am I right? Wink, wink. I don't think so. So, in my mind, the only reason why this master killed Kalnaka is because Mai decided to return to Osha and the Jedi. If Kamir is the person behind it, then he would take much time to unite himself and get to Kalnaka before Mai. However, it seems to be too obvious to be true. We're being misguided, you know. I have a feeling we're being misguided, you know. Don't take this as for granted. Take it as a grand assault. And I believe that the person behind the mask is none other than Mother Corey. Which, that really is a bold statement, if you, if I say so myself. A really bold statement. So think about it. Just, just, just take a moment, sit down, relax, and think about it. You know, just think about it. Think about it, you know. If you think about it, she served the incident at Brendok. We're clear there at this point, right? Right. So there are more than enough motives for her to hate the Jedi. She has a knowledge of power considered to be dark and unnatural, and the coven of witches were more than trained to fight. So there are two things, two things, that really convince me of this. The first one is the physical constitution. Meni Jacinto, come here, is 5'11", or 1.8 meters. While Amanda Steinberg, or my slash Osha, is 5'3", or 1.6 meters. So, if we if we search for the image, and we see the uh, side by side, and the, when they're confronting each other, we can see the differences in height between the two. And it's considerable, but most of it is because of the big bulky helmet. But I still think there is a noticeable uh, height difference because the helmet is way, way over, uh, way, but way over uh, my and, and Osha by far. So the second and most convincing one, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, is the skin of this person, you know. The left hand is covered by a glove, but you can see the right arm and hand are not. At first, it looks like the mysterious figure has dark skin. But it's not because of the skin pigment, because it's burned. You know? So if you look at the images, and you find out the one that this villain, I want to call it a villain, because we don't have a specific title for it yet, is like when he's standing there in the forest, you clearly see the dark skin, you know? You have a chance on that frame, you know? It shows very quickly, you know? You might might want to check it on a monitor or a TV, not the phone. In the phone, you have a harder time uh, catching it. But on the monitor or TV, you'll have a better chance to spot the details. So, the mask character trains Maya to kill the four Jedis who were at Brendok. Has dark side powers, survived the fire and has a fairly small constitution. I don't know about you, I don't know about you all, but I think that this really ties it all up. Just saying. So whoever this person is can't be underestimated. There weren't any visible signs of lightsaber combat in Klanaka's home, which means that he didn't even get a chance to fight back. Sneaking on a Jedi Wookiee like that sounds extremely difficult. This, um, his murderer uh, is extremely capable. His murderer is extremely capable and should not be underestimated. Okay? He should not be underestimated. Because a lot of people do tend to underestimate a Wookiee. 
But just because someone is behind this plan doesn't mean that this person is behind everything. The Sith are extremely good at hiding their identities and using others to do their dirty work. Exactly like how it happened with Anakin. So, just like my and Quirmia are being used, the individuals might be the pawn of a more powerful figure, you know? Just like how Maul, Dooku, Grievous, Ventress, and Vader were all puppets of Palpatine, the Master always remains in the shadows, pulling the strings while the apprentices are the ones who confront the enemy. And I seriously doubt that a Dark Lord or of the Sith would attack so openly. This is unless the idea is to wipe out every single one of them. You know, that, that that's just a, a way to put it in there, a way to, to get things flowing a little bit. So, before I get my final thoughts, let's listen to another song. And this is our song break. And we're going to get ourselves the song Tribal by yours truly, Andrew Van Zark. This is an original song. It incorporates a little bit of frame drum. So let's get it running and let's get it flowing. It feels really the acolyte-ish, like if we were like in that forest and whatnot. So let's give it a listen and enjoy ourselves a little bit of Tribal. This was released in 2022.
Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So let's get ourselves back here into the awesomeness that it is the Acolyte. So the final thoughts that I have here um, with the episode. Um, the plot really gets really thickened here and things are getting more interesting. Um, the way that the episode ended, in my opinion, was a little bit abrupt. I was like, it's, are you going to leave us in a cliffhanger like that? And, it, and and it's just that they left us in a cliffhanger. They left us in a cliffhanger that felt like they cut the footage too too early, you know? So there's a lot more questions to be answered. We'll, we'll see them as every episode comes out. But I think at this point in time, I'm more hyped than anything for the Acolyte, for sure. You know, I can't wait to get more Acolyte stuff out there. Um, you know, the theory is that Kamir could be the one doesn't, doesn't make any sense um, at all. I still think that it could be, you know, Mother Coril. Mother Coril makes a lot more sense to me, if uh, you ask me. And uh, this this is getting more mysterious as things get, you know, further in. So the High Republic is considered to be the Golden Age for the Jedi, but it's not hard to see why that era is coming to an end. You know, the Jedi Order is slowly becoming an instrument of the politicians, and this is reflected in both thoughts and actions. It saddens me to see Vernestra Roll become the best example of this. It's like watching a domino effect in reverse. We already know that the Jedi and the Republic will be destroyed, but the Acolyte is showing us when the first pieces start to fall and how clueless everyone was from the beginning. You know, funnily enough, the credits confirm that the Syrian is the briefing room. You know, the Syrian, the briefing room is none other than. Come on, drum roll, drum roll. Blah, 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 blah. Kid out of Moon Day. The Jedi Master was a witness to the beginning of the end, and he was clueless until his final moments. You can check it out on the guest starring section of the credits. Like, mmm, that for sure is amazing having the awesome Kid out of Moon Day. So Kofar is my favorite planet of the series so far. The massive trees and the terrifying Umbromoth insects remind me a lot of my times exploring deeper parts of Kashyyyk when playing Knights of the Old Republic, Republic Commando, and Jedi Fallen Order. You know, being Knights of the Republic, the best one of them all. So the mystery of the mask figure is the most exciting part for me. I can't wait to learn the background of this character. Uh, the reasons for his or her actions, the identity, and most importantly, how all of this fits into the bigger picture. So, if you've missed a lot of other stuff, uh, there's previous episodes that I've done that are recorded, and you can check it out and see my initial thoughts. You can check me out on X. That way you can get yourself started seeing all the posts I do from Star Wars and also Star Trek music and other geeky topics. Um, and, uh, no, there's no other better way to just go to Disney Plus and stream the Acolyte. At first, you're going to be a little disappointed, but as the thing goes flowing and you reach episode four, woo, things get really awesome at episode four. You know, I, I liked episode three. Episode three was pretty fun, but episode four will go you to places. We'll get you to a galaxy far, far away for sure. So anyways, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being awesome. I'm Adam Van Zark, and I'm signing out. I'll catch you on the flip side. Adios, amigos. Let's roll that outro. Unite for the sound revolution in Galactic Jaguar Radio. Support Anna Ranzark's original tunes, the polls of our online radio station, and keep the news blazing like Beskar. Click, donate, and hit that PayPal button, and join the watch. Keep the tunes alive. This is the way.